that sometimes I think the university is wasted on the young, but they go there because they think they should, because right. they know that if they don't, they won't get paid as much money. But I know so many young people, I used to work in a venue, in a music venue, and they're like, I'm doing it, I'm not quite sure why, Mm -hmm. It's part of the process, and they kind of become addressed. The research is really clear. Yes, there's plenty of things that are motivating. Money, power, sex, fame. There's this whole line of research looking at those mm -hmm. are legitimate goals to pursue. However, the fulfillment of those goals is less fulfilling. There are other goals that, that are things like community, things like relationship, things like uh, spirituality, uh, basically non-material yeah. goals. Those are considered material goals, the, the ones, the initial ones, and then and the non-material goals. The non-material ones are much more fulfilling. If your ultimate thing is fulfillment, those aren't the best ones to pursue. There yeah. are other things you can pursue that are going to be better. And then the, you know, the evidence is really clear mm -hmm. on that. And it just reinforces exactly what many age-old traditions have said. And that's one of the things mm -hmm. I, I emphasize about the, the self-determination theory psychological framework is it's not saying that any of the language we talked about motivation before was utterly wrong. It's just that right. we're being more precise. I think the implications are really important too yes. for adults, for bringing young people into adulthood and being able to function and become productive and, and most importantly feel fulfilled and have a sense of identity. We don't want people just to be compliant and then disillusioned. <laughs> well, well, actually, actually, actually we do people. want people disillusioned. Um, well, I mean, we were in the sense, yeah, that, yeah, in the sense they will, you know, that disillusionment is part of the process, yeah. But what I mean is that I had this great start in life as a child in the mm -hmm. 70s in that sense. And I, when I couldn't go to university and when I couldn't do that, my early adulthood in a sense was, was quite adrift because I didn't have any mm -hmm. degrees or anything like that. I just worked. I did what I could. I didn't understand why I couldn't, how I didn't have my, my executive functions weren't working properly. Right. I knew that I was different from other people, but I didn't really know why. And so I was just mm -hmm. basically going from one thing to another, hopefully finding, you know, eventually I'll find what I'm doing. But as I went through that, I became more and more sort of, I tried to train myself as an adult, at what, you know, at adulting with certain things like that. There's sort of certain bits of adulting that I've absolutely kept. But there's other bits I've had to re-unlearn, you might say, <laughs> to, to feel happiness and feel and to actually feel that I was doing what I wanted to do with my life and being and doing what I believe in. Mm -hmm. And the sort of passion for exploring or at least giving, giving space and time to allowing young people to work it out for themselves without, mm -hmm. you know, without telling them what to do. This is the Agentic Schools Podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg.